You know, when you go through an experience of rejection that is this small, but it feels this big, even bigger. Like, you know very well that you shouldn't be feeling this much pain over something this small, but you are feeling that pain. Like, I'm not talking about moments when people tell you it shouldn't hurt that bad. I'm talking about moments when you know it shouldn't hurt that bad. For example, when someone that you were never in a relationship with rejects you in some way, you know that it shouldn't feel like you were with this person for 50 years and ended a relationship, right? So the contrast between what you know, you know, you should feel based on the event itself versus how you actually feel, I hope it wakes you up to the fact that you have a little bit of work to do. What could be happening is that you are carrying emotional debt. Emotional debt, just like any other debt, is the accumulation over the years of you know, if you're thinking of money, the accumulation of money over the years that you owe. Now, this is the accumulation of experiences and moments that you've gone through, emotions that visited you that you didn't take the time to feel, that you didn't take the time to go down that path of asking yourself, where did this come from? And is it true? And what did it tell me about myself? And all that. So over the years, say this is one experience, one moment that taught you that you deserve everybody to walk away, that you don't deserve love, that you don't deserve belonging, right? You experience that. As a child, you don't really know, you don't have the tools to say that's wrong. So it starts forming a belief within you about yourself. And over the years, every moment, every experience that you go through that shows you that same pattern that same belief just confirms that for you and that's why an event that's this big feels like it's all of these because you haven't felt all of these but they are all waiting at your door to be felt by you right and it's not like the more you push them outside the more they're actually outside of you they're inside of you waiting to be felt by you waiting to be resolved by you so the relief that you are looking for is within you. Let's draw the comparison between a financial debt that you may have and emotional debt because I think it will help you understand what relief looks like. I heard that in August of this year, President Joe Biden announced that people who have student loans who make under $125,000 and the rules are different for couples, you can look that up, they are going to be offered up to $20,000 in student debt loan relief, which is amazing, right? When you think of this weight that you've been carrying and all of a sudden, you know, say you're carrying up to $25,000 and then someone's like, oh, I can take $20,000 away from that if you need that help. Doesn't it feel like such a big relief? Like you're carrying this much and now you just have to carry this much. That's incredible. Now let's think of that compared to emotional debt. How do you get that kind of relief? Because no president or therapist is going to come to you and say, here, let me take that. I'm gonna just take all of those pains and memories and experiences and just get rid of their pain. You are the one who has to do that. You are the one who has to go down. Those memories, those experiences, those stories, everything they told you about yourself and ask yourself, is this true? And with the tools that I had at the time, say you were a child and you were going through an experience where you were made to feel like you don't deserve love. As a child, you don't know how to tell yourself this is not real. This is not true. I do deserve love. And so you carry that belief into your adulthood and you, every experience that you go through that shows you that you don't deserve love, you subconsciously are confirming what you already believed about yourself or started believing about yourself at a time when you had no power to believe otherwise. So when you go back to those stories and you sit with your seven, eight, even two, three-year-old self and you say, that's not true. And the adults in your life at the time should have treated you differently. They should have made you feel differently, but they didn't. When you are able to do that 
and walk with yourself. Walk in your own shoes. Just like you say, I walked in someone else's shoes. I, shoes, I empathized with them. You can do that for yourself too. And when you're able to do that, and this debt that you're carrying around with you, where do you think these mountains that you are carrying you were only supposed to climb came from? Because that debt that you're carrying with you everywhere you go is heavy. And it's a constant reminder. It even you know, comes into moments, into your present when you haven't experienced that rejection yet, but it's telling you, hold on, don't open up because you might experience this. You know, it's a constant reminder. So when you give yourself that relief by walking into those stories, into those moments, walking in your own shoes, you give yourself that relief, okay? So I hope that you will decide today to give yourself that relief by just sit down with the story that you're going through right now. You don't have to do it all at once. Just like with a loan, you might pay things, you know, one bit at a time. You're gonna heal one bit at a time. You're gonna give yourself relief from that emotional debt one bit at a time by taking each and every one of those stories and those moments and allowing them in. I know it's scary, but once you allow one in at a time, and you sit with yourself as you would sit with someone you love, the relief that you will feel is unmatchable. So I hope you make that choice today.